Affirmative. <laughs> We are not caught up with temporal space butt bugs. We are solely in the realm of the captain's quadrant. Did I just steal your your line, Jason? <laughs> we may not have gotten butt bugs, but by <laughs> God, we got a time bug. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Woo, bugs. All right. We are back to talk about Star Trek Discovery. Obviously, that's why you click this thumbnail and you wanted to hang out with these three handsome gentlemen, myself included. Uh, we are the Captain's Quadrant. <laughs> We've got Jason Roy Gaston, VHS Jason, Ooh. and myself, Joe Dove. And we are talking about probably one of the better uh, Discovery episodes I've seen. Uh, sorry, I think Jason <laughs> called it a time. <laughs> He's time, time, time it several been... times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was just gone for four days. <laughs> we were just talking about Star Trek Picard. <laughs> Maybe we should have Reason a warning. There are flash <laughs> Maybe we need to have a warning. There are flashing images before this episode. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Don't don't watch this too close to your face. Uh, <laughs> there was a lot, a lot that happened in this episode, and I loved every minute of it so stay tuned hang out with us because we're gonna see if does jace miss his bingo because we're playing the the brand new game that everybody loves star trek bingo and uh, we'll have more on that later but let us hop into the synopsis jason gaston I'm ready you please hope your eyes can read this as the race between Discovery and the Bounty Hunters lock and maul intensifies, an unexpected Ted weapon <laughs> forces Burnham and Rayner to work past their differences to save the rest of the crew. Yes, yes, so true. So much fun. Let us hop into First Contact. Thanks. I think you should update that with a fart back. I don't know. Yeah. Should become no. like no. Should become no. battle squits. Just <laughs> battle squits. <laughs> oh, man. It's, so, it's funny. Like I, I'll watch the show and then laugh at the, those <laughs> those parts still. It's like oh. yeah. it's, it's very much that Leo meme. But, yeah, oh. yeah. But it still works. It hits every time. It hits every time. All right, we're gonna start off with uh VHS Jace. Um, you know, what can I say? I kind of enjoyed this filler episode because it is for me it felt like much of a filler episode but in a good way not a negative way um look i'm a sucker for time travel plots i always have been i can't get enough of them and when you go back and revisit certain other episodes um yeah like i love back to the future too and it's kind of where this is highly influenced from um yeah, I mean, I've got some nitpicks, as I always do, because I am the old man yelling at the clouds, um, according to Jason's graphic that he made me. So that, <laughs> yeah. that is, old man yells at Trek. Um, but no, uh, I had a fun time with it. But it felt very, I was a little bit concerned because it is a fellow episode. And it's like, do you really have the luxury to do a fellow episode? But maybe I'm wrong on that. And, I, and it is a very important episode in the whole arc of the series. But yeah, thumbs up. Didn't hate it this week. All right, Jason Roy Gaston. Uh, it's been my favorite episode of Discovery for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I I enjoy I I enjoy the season long arcs, but I also enjoy episodes with a beginning, middle, and an end, where I can get invested in the story of that one episode. And whenever it's done, it's wrapped up, and I feel a sense of completion. And I felt that with this. Not only that, but I enjoy episodes, especially around the end run of a series, that kind of shows you how far some of the characters have come. And when Burnham meets herself and then beats herself, <laughs> I I enjoyed that scene because it, it was like, yeah, I remember when Burnham was like that and she wasn't very likable. And now she's she's grown into kind of this cool little den mother. And I, I enjoy that. I, I this has been my favorite episode of Discovery for quite some time. I agree. This was an excellent episode. I really enjoyed visiting some of the past crew members that are no longer with us. 
uh, i.e. Robot Lady. Um, and Teddy. Teddy. Does too. <laughs> yeah. Teddy does hey, too. I was on season two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're I played um, a butt bug. <laughs> and My scene was cut. <laughs> and I enjoy yeah, he's not happy either. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I heard that. Uh, no, I just um really appreciated the the jumps around. I I love time travel and I love the nod to Enterprise having to deal with the time travel um time temporal cold war. So I thought that was a cool nod. So let us hop into further discussions of this episode in our segment known fondly as hey, sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. <laughs> yes pros and cons and one uh comment that we got in the past was it should have been like cons and i said no and now there's a star trek uh podcast called pros and cons like con so i'm glad we glad you jason vhs we lead the way yeah. everyone else can follow yeah yeah exactly i like i like we kept it to the proper vernacular so uh jason roy gaston your pros and cons Oh, well, the pros is, as I said, this was a very tight story with a beginning, middle, and end. Uh, lots of humor. I enjoyed the humor, especially from Stamets. Um, whenever he, the way he would clear engineering, I thought was just great, especially whenever they were in first season mode and he just walks in and goes, I'm very angry and surly, and everybody leaves. I just, <laughs> yeah. I laughed out loud at that. Uh, I, again, I enjoy Rainier. I think he's a great. Uh, he's a great foil for Burnham. I honestly kind of wish he joined the show sooner because he is his by the book mentality versus Burnham's den mother. And we're all friends here mentality. I, I like the way that they, they conflict with each other because sometimes she's right. Sometimes he's right. I, I enjoy that. Uh, always great to see Arium again. How sad is it that Arium gets the best uh, character? <laughs> growth since uh, after she's dead uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh yeah I, I can see me doing unremarkable that right for me she was unremarkable and she was <laughs> awesome yeah. yeah arium i miss you every day my name's not arium it's alice <laughs> i've been calling you arium all this time <laughs> I know we just never corrected you. Yeah. You were we too punchy. Call, we let you call Robot Lady Arium as a joke. <laughs> um, as for as for cons, quite honestly, I don't really have any. I I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. It's not groundbreaking. It, it's not like this is the greatest episode of Star Trek of all time. It was just it was satisfying. It was satisfying. It was well done. It showed us how far some of the characters have come. And I enjoyed it. So I don't really have cons. I'm sure Jace has got plenty. Well, I reckon there would I'm surprised you didn't mention one thing. And that is the trope, which we which I know you didn't like in the first episode. They start with again 15 hours earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Like I did instantly go, oh no. Well, I don't but it was mind okay. that because they didn't flash back to it. It's mm. just basically, this That's is where we got it from. Time. Let's continue the story. So we didn't yeah. have to watch it replayed again later. All right. VHS Chase. Okay. Uh, I have a real interesting one because it's a pro and a con at the same time. Ooh. And Jason already mentioned it. It's the Michael Burnham fight, which is great in the episode. But it, it's a con because it, I think it highlights one of the weaknesses early on in Discovery. She wasn't a protagonist that you really liked. Mm. And they kind of, in a way, making fun of that, almost fourth wall breaking, making fun of themselves, which I really like, because she wasn't a likable character early on. Right. But she was the lead that you were supposed to be rooting for. She was a hard person to root for early on yeah. because she was so aggressive. But the fight itself was great it was fun it was you know it had all those kind of good things all another week is. is is the our, our friendly engineer who if you're seeing a freaking biological or technological new thing in engineering maybe instantly go we have you know this metal bug in engineering can somebody come and help but he watches a jump from wall to wall and then absorb kind of going well that's weird it's you like, know what? I didn't catch on. that. That is amazing. Good catch. Yeah. <laughs> I did think, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, uh, 
uh, never mind. <laughs> that is a good catch, dude. I, I actually um, missed that. You know, uh, a Connie is poor Doug Jones, not even getting a credit in this episode. Yeah. And that voice that you heard and the footage that you heard came from a previous episode. Oh, wow. They didn't even so use He wasn't movie. involved in this episode at all. Wow. Um, at all, which was great. Um, some of the great little things that I love. I love Zora's playing K Sarah Sarah in the end. I just love, like, it's the first time that I liked Zora as an AI thing. It was mm. the future. And I, I just love that whole scene. I love the, like, hey, Sarah, so whatever will it be. Will be. be. Yeah. I just really kind of love that. I certainly love, I love and hate this at the same time. Everything happening in the ready room. Like a lot of it's happening in the ready room because I'm like, hey, let's pan out. Let's have a look at San Francisco back in the time. Let's get oh, some yeah. external shots. But we only get it to see from their perspective, which is actually good storytelling. So, but selfishly, I wanted to see more of it. Um, don't know how to feel about what they're doing to Raina. If this is, if by the end of this episode, Raina has come down just 10 degrees and he's going to be a bit more affable. I'm okay. But if we see him turn into another beta boy booker, oh, no. I'm not oh. going to be happy. The so music. leave the character as is because you brought him down just a bit. You've taken off the sharp edge. Um, and I like that moment between the summits. You know, like, let's show him how some old boys can get it done. I thought that was nice. I thought that was great little character development for him. It was kind of, it was kind of good. So there's not a lot to hate about this episode really at all. Um, they're just nitpicky things. I mean, it's the best one of the season so far, and um, maybe Jason Dry could be one of the best episodes they've done. Period. Like, yeah, it's very good. And I don't know if it's, that's because maybe we're all suckers for time travel plots. Maybe I don't know, but I am. Yeah, same. I mean, and, one of my yeah. favorite movies is The Terminator. Da -da. Yep. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> You're bringing that up now because we just filmed another show. Why are we <laughs> Why am I so <laughs> tiny? <laughs> Why did I arrive in the past so tiny? <laughs> you said I had to be naked, but now I'm like tiny. <laughs> you said I had to be yeah. naked. Then why do you have the camcorder? Put it down. <laughs> Put it down. Uh, well, can I say one more positive? I really oh, like the scene yeah. where she goes into the bridge and has to convince them all yeah. that she's not nuts, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. angry Michael Burnham. Right. You would think the hair would have given it away. Yeah, yeah. Which Tilly didn't. Oh, I like the hair. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, Tilly. Her name's not Tilly. It's Space Karen. Space Karen. She like, didn't deserve that. This episode, you put that away. No, she was not. She, she's not full blown Space Karen. But I will stand by. She's headed in that direction. Mm, 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 mm. She's gonna mm, be the teacher. Mm, this. But she's nice. She's nice. Um, Tilly here. Yeah, and I love how they kind of. Oh, how do we make it look like old Tilly? Well, we we'll just put a hair like it was. Yeah, hey, we're back. That was to yeah. Yeah, that was easy change. makeup day. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. for me, I love the opening. The um, getting the one up on the alien species because he was plotting to plot against them. So they went up there. Oh, you're gonna try to swindle more money out of us? Okay. And the typical bad guy thing was, you know, we we'll make out over his dead ass. So I thought that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really fun. So, yeah. um, uh, Elias really is having this reminds me of that sick apprentice from Ahsoka so much. Oh, yeah, she like, does. every time I see her, I just go, Man, you just seem and you're kind of very similar character wise. Yeah, that's a good, good catch, too. Yeah, um, yeah, I really enjoyed that intro. Uh, I thought that was a lot of fun. The the mystery box that we have now has another layer. And that is uh, something that we had mentioned earlier uh, on the theories part. And that's the Breen connection. They oh, mention yeah. the Breen every episode yeah. in this. And the Breen, yeah, the Breen have something to do with the technology from the progenitors. So uh, it's going to be wild. And I think the Breen are going to be seemingly the big bad at the end of this whole journey. So, 
It, now, by the way, guys, if you're wondering why I'm not on the theory show, I have worked. suggested a couple of theories to these guys. However, they've said something about perverted and offensive, <laughs> and you're never coming on the show. So that's why I'm not on. <laughs> I can't even tell you what the theories were. No, they, please, they don't. Me. please don't. No, no, don't. you can't. You can't. You can't. We'll, we'll get removed, and we can't afford that. So we've, done, we've, come, we've come, come so far. No, we've come so far. Um, the. The other big pro for me is a lot of the, what you guys mentioned was uh, revisiting some of the earlier seasons, uh, epic arcs, and I like the Burnham Fu. Uh, it's one level up from <laughs> Burnham, Burnham Fu. Burnham I like Fu. Burnham Fu. Yeah, yeah, she's really got it, you know, and she's kung fu herself. And the only thing that was missing was, you know, I wouldn't have even been there. I will say where Michael says. It's the Red Angel. Her look and the way she says it is the kind of reaction I had to having to do with that storyline again. Is like, uh, oh, Red Angel storyline. <laughs> you didn't uh, like I like the No, movie. and I got real concerned early on when I thought, oh, no. Are we doing a whole Red Angel thing again? Are we going back to revisit it? Because no, no, no. I cannot stand that plot line. Yeah. I, I was – like my con was they had an opportunity to – bring back Lorca for five seconds or just a, a quick bit. And that would have been kind of interesting because he was in love with Michael Burnham. So that would have played an extra ante in this, especially because she's got a reconnection with books. And I feel like that kiss rekindled some of that fire in their relationship. She was like, Ooh, I remember this. And I remember those abs, you know, like I feel like she got <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot out of that experience going back and, and making out with beta boy book. Uh, as Jimmy just changed. yeah. <laughs> boy, boy. Hey, Tignataro. Oh my god, oh, why are they making uh, her a captain of so... her own starship? If we can't get legacy, give that woman a show, yeah. She steals every scene that she is in. Yeah. If she's every... a teacher at the academy, I'm all in. That's it, it actually may make me a bit more interested in if she yeah. is a teacher, then I would. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I have a feeling books is going to have be involved in somehow in, in Star Trek. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cleaning yeah, up after yeah. everyone else. They'll make the clean thing. Oh no! Yeah. The janitor. <laughs> make him wear an apron. Oh no! I don't think it would be that far. But yeah, Tig Nataro being uh, on on Starfleet Academy will will put butts in the seats for sure. Yes, most definitely. Um, most hey, here, I've got a bit of a tidbit for you. Apparently, the weapons dealer was Anari, and they were. Where have they also appeared in Trek? previous history they've appeared in one other show is that ds9 again nope oh it's voyager hmm. apparently voyager he's from a, yeah from voyager which was nice oh wow a little nod to voyager that's a deep cut though because it's definitely yeah yeah because yeah, I was well, wondering I up with it. I'm reading it off a website. Uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to sound smart, but I don't really know. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's like, wow, he got really good with his trivia here. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah, I, I, I just thought there was a, a lot of pros, very little cons. Mm -hmm. um, just, not, again, not using Saru or um, Tara, I thought kind of missed opportunities there. That's, I get bad feelings about that plot line. <clears throat> oh, really? Saru plot line, yeah. I don't know if there's enough meat on the bone to make it effective. No, I think I so. hope I'm wrong. Sure. I think because that's good. I have a feeling their plot line is going to lead into the Breen connection. It's going to yeah. connect there. Just Saru, I feel, is wasted in the political realm as a character that the audience loves. Mm. But I, 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 I don't ever feel this will be long-term for him. I think well, this will be – he'll be back – on the ship in a couple of weeks. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I think, think well. No, I think his his well. whole. I think that's going to be the meet up, the reunion yeah. point. Yeah. No, I think it's going to be a reunion point where something's going to happen. I mean, this is just. I'm going to probably bring it on the speculation show, but mm -hmm. they're going to have to bring the diplomats because they're t dealing with the Breen and the Breen keep attacking outposts and different planets that are kind of being reabsorbed into the Federation. And I think that they're going to have a big meetup point where, okay, the diplomats have to go on a mission and negotiate with the Breen. And then Saru and, and everybody's going to yeah, join them. Like, uh, right now I'm hearing trade routes from episode one plot line. Like, like it, it's, it's all about <laughs> plot line that isn't grabbing me though. Even your theory there doesn't sound exciting to me. And mm. I think it's to Saru yeah. who is standout. 
<laughs> I like it. Yeah. Hey, can I give you one more trivia? I, I ask this question. Reno and Rainer, what one thing do they have in common? Reno? Reno? Reno. Reno Jet Reno. Reno. Jet Reno and... They uh, both share a love for Vespa martinis, a cocktail yes. invented for James Bond. Oh, and, uh, look at that. They both love themselves a martini. Maybe they're both spies. Put them yeah. both on a show together. Yeah, that would be a fun show. I'd watch that. Star Trek martini. <laughs> yeah. Getting drunk. <laughs> Getting up highly. Yeah. Star Trek, surly and sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, I really do worry about his character. I don't want him to end up like Shaw, where he gets waxed off in the middle of the season or right at, was it right at the end? Of... But I will stand by saying that as much as I hate that death, it was so necessary for that season. Yes, mm. it was. It was. And, and it added so much power in the moment, you know. I mean, but, yeah, oh, yeah, I don't want to die. I don't want it to be repeated. It's like you guys did that once. Don't do it He's again. So sexy. He can't die. <laughs> and I, I think that the the other big standout was the ship. Um, though we didn't get very many outside shots of it, we got to live inside the ship, and it was its own character. And it didn't blow up this week, so I thought that was another interesting point. It's always nice <laughs> because he didn't get his bingo. I could see it. In his <laughs> yeah, face. we'll get into that. Later. <laughs> But it was really great to go into engineering and to go into the corridors to so have our our uh, our Burnham food. Does it, does it feel like what what was they used to call the episodes where they were running out of money and they shoot it all on the ship? Because it got a little, what? yeah, it, it's got a bit of vibe of that, hasn't it? Yeah, it mm. does. Yeah, like this is internally in the ship, really. You know. Um, yeah, and, and you know, it's it's fortunate that they never updated the bridge set to thirty second century technology because you know you can just yeah yeah you know, right. It doesn't matter what time we're in the ship. Yeah, just inside. change the <laughs> uniforms and we're fine. You do get a little sense of what the future's <laughs> like because of her her Apple Watch. Remember in the bridge, she does her <laughs> Apple Watch. Oh and yeah, projects out. She goes, "Oh, I like that." Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she gets to see a little glimpse of the future. A little um, glimpse of the future. Because I love they spend half the episode so focused on not screwing with the timeline. Right. That by the time Michael Boyne works at the elevator, it's like, screw it. Like, yeah, yeah. It's done. It's done. Yeah. I love the fact that, that Burnham spends a good five, six minutes trying to convince the old bridge crew that she's from the future. And then she goes, right. whoop, whoop, and yeah. they, they all go, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. like, you should have led with that. Yeah, you should have led with that. Yeah. Great right. point. Great point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a good point. That's a great point. Um, I guess it's time for uh, your bingo segment. Yeah, might as well. Let's get yeah, into yeah. I'll do my bingo segment. Now, this week, I was there intently thinking, I'm going to get a couple this week. And man, did I come close. So, but I didn't get any extra beliefs. I'm still stuck on two. And the ones that I did get close was I thought Michael Burnham was going to cry. I really did. And I'm like, cry. Will you just cry, please? <laughs> it never happened. The other thing I thought I may get, and I was so close this week, is that the bridge, in any moment of collision attack, will shoot fire out of multiple console panels. Fire did shoot out of a console panel, but technically it was in the ready room. So... I'm getting there. Getting I still feel very confident, guys, that, in fact, by the end, I'll be able to proudly say, Ooh, that's a bingo. Yeah, and then he'll win one of our illustrious Captain's Quadrant hats. This is his actual hat that he's getting when he comes to America, and I will hand it to him, and we'll film that and put it on our shorts. And so. now I'm concerned it's injected with that same stuff that poor guy in the beginning. <laughs> no, it's not because it was just touch, wasn't it? He touched that <laughs> thing. That's what poisoned him, and yeah, and eating him away. That like, was wild. I thought that was a real yeah. poison. Yeah. Oh, you know what else was really cool is when Samets got infected. When you go back to see that infection again, I forgot how cool that was. Yeah. I do like Star Trek, modern Star Trek. When you get infected with something, it isn't a rash. No, it's, it's like always oh. like I'm gonna die in 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, the clock's <laughs> like, the worst. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I guess it's time to fire at will. Fire at will. <laughs> We're going to do something a little bit different on this one. I'm going to ask you guys about your personal lives because I care. What's going on, Jace? We'll start with you, VHS Jace. What's going on in your personal life? Um, <laughs> you didn't expect that, did oh, you? <laughs> no, not really. Uh, you know, the emus continue to circle the house. Oh, um, no. <laughs> drop bears season. So they're, you know, little children are being attacked daily. Oh, no. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, just being me. Looking forward to the great trip coming at the end of May. That's what I'm really... That's all my focus in my personal life. Oh, man, that's going to be so exciting. Trek Long Island 2, May 31st through June 2nd. All three of us will be in person. We're going to be hanging out with all the greats in Star Trek. We're going to hang out with Ursula. We're going to hang out with uh, the Admiral Chase Masterson. Of course, Armin Shimmerman and Neelix mm. himself. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to hang out with our fellow podcasters, stunt folks, authors. We're going to get their names right this time. And the singers, Bonnie, and the Klingon Pop Warrior. It's going to be a blast. And most importantly, Joe, we're going to be hanging out with each other. Yeah, for the first time ever. Right. Yeah, All... not over video. No. No, in person. <laughs> in person, live and in color. It's going to be a blast. All right, Jason Roy Gaston, what's going on with you? I heard you're trying to be teacher of the year or something. Yes, America's favorite teacher is oh, a matter right. of fact. Um, so go visit my Facebook page and go to the link and vote for me because Ooh. I... I want to win because yes. I have a big ego. Great. Great. Yes. Uh, my, and, you have a big ego. I, I, as I stated, I really are offended by the whole concept because he should have just been given the bloody trophy. Yeah, I exactly. agree. I agree. But uh, anyway, yeah, I've got that going on right now. And uh, if you happen to live in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, please come see me at the Funky Town Focus celebration. I will be live on stage. Wow. On May 11th, and if you want some more information about that, please visit funkytownfocus.com. I so will, what, 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 what is the event? What is the event about? It is a celebration of the arts, and they oh. asked me to and uh, just do like a little, uh, do a get together, you know, just talking about content creation and things like that. And, All right. Yeah, so it's had gonna a, be a lot. Had to be completely offensive with bad Australian accents. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One thing you could bring up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, the, it got confirmed the other day that I'm going to be taking a bunch of people to Egypt with me. So that's gonna Ooh. be a lot of fun. So yeah. Uh, if you want more information about that, go visit my website, JasonRoyGaston.com. Somehow, I think it's a good opportunity to reenact the Mummy movie. The, oh. Brendan, right, Alex Kurt. Yeah, Brendan, Brendan Fraser will not be there. I do oh. apologize. Uh, I, you know, oh, that fair. What about yeah, Odette? I know. Will be there? Odette, Odette. Odette. Oh, hey, I could invite. I could have. Uh, I could invite. Yes, yeah, Space Daddy. Come on, yeah. come on down, Admiral. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go back to Egypt. Did they actually film that in Egypt, or was it all on set? The Mummy. I would be surprised yeah. if they actually filmed that in Egypt. Set. Yeah, no location for that. That's Dang, a good old backlot movie. Oh, that would have been fun if they went to Egypt. Yeah. Uh, for me, I will be in Long Island talking with... No, 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 way! You're currently in two places at once. I am. I am bending space in time. I got one of those little bugs in me. Situation right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, I am currently in Long Island right now as you're watching this. I am hanging out with Melanie Smith. We're talking about The Sacrifice of Angels, one of the best Deep Space Nine episodes in season six. Mm. And we're talking about her book, and it's just so much fun happening at that at this time, at this point in time. We are having a blast. Oh, Sounds like it's going well too. It's going well. We have we have a sell through of seventy tickets already uh, for a hundred maximum. So we're very excited about the prospects of that. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And that's a big thanks to our good friend Stephanie, the person behind the scenes at Trek Long Island. So big thanks to them and for giving us the opportunity to hang out with Melanie. Who turns out is my neighbor. No, I'm kidding. But she, she's close by, apparently. So there is a lot of fun going on there. Now, Star Trek. Fire at will. We've got a lot of stuff that had popped off for Star Trek that you guys might not know about, including Michael McMahon's future. 
Now, Mike McMahon is the guy behind Lower Decks. As you know, Lower Decks is no longer going to be mm -hmm. a series. So his new project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. There's a petition that you can sign to save Star Trek. I signed it, yes. You signed it? Yeah, I think I did too. Hashtag yeah. save Lower Decks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Okay. And then follow us on the socials, Captain's Quadrant. Yeah, that'd be great. And I'll get nothing to say. <laughs> but his new project, I think you might like because we are all the same generation. I did you guys have Sega Genesis? Yes, of course. He I has both. I was spoiled. It, yeah, I was spoiled too. I have both. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be he's going to be helming the Golden Axe series. All right, so we're going to see a guy with an axe. We're going to see a guy with a sword, a chick with a sword, and they're going to jump on little strange lizards occasionally. Yeah. Their tails around. Yeah. Great game. Great okay. game. It was such a good game. So he's going to make that a cartoon, and uh, that's going to be probably 2025 projects. Yeah. So. Look, it's still, it's still, to me, it is baffling <laughs> the decision they made because you think about it, it wasn't a super expensive show to make. It, no. no way it was. They no. only did ten episodes at a time. It was current. It was, it was fourth wall break breaking. It was joyous. Yeah. And some of the new yep. trick hasn't always been joyous, so it was nice to have that as well. Um, yeah, it's just baffling to me why they did it, and uh, I just don't understand the decision making. Unless there's a grand plan that they mm. have that we're all going to go. Whoop! My bad. I was wrong. I just, I, it to me it represents the the fact that they are not listening to their fan base and they're taking the series in the direction that we don't want. Right. It's going to be an interesting time in track because that also the removal of that show makes it a hole in the timeline for Star Trek because yes, we're going to get Prodigy season two at some point maybe this year. Mm. But then nothing else. I'm gonna have to learn French just so I can watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's available yeah. in France by mistake. Le cow. <laughs> You're so right though, Joe. We we what do they do with that space? Because that is the fertile grounds. They're unwilling to continue in. Yeah. Because if you think about it now, they have purposely excised anything in that time. There's no more to Picard. They're not giving us legacy. They got rid of Lower Decks and, and say goodbye to Prodigy. So for some reason, this current executive team don't want to deal with a post-Picard universe. Right. It sounds like they might be going into a, a movie verse because we're going to get Section 31 at the end of the year. Which we're is just a streaming it. movie. It's not. Yeah, it's not. A th I don't want to be. Movies. I don't want to be that guy, but it isn't a film film. It's a streaming movie. Right. It's like it's a Netflix movie. Still a movie. Yeah, but it's not. It, it's why why isn't it getting a theatrical release? What's wrong with it? If they've spent the money making it. Throw another ten million down the pipeline, market it, make some money at the the box office, and test how much fans really want to see Star Trek at the cinema. Yeah, there's your test case. Yeah, instead of doing Star Trek Four, which. Yeah. I don't know. A prequel. Like, a prequel. Look, yeah. uh, you know, we had the Prime. We've got the Prime. We've got the Kelvin. This film feels like the potential is to shatter all that and just make something ultra confusing. Yeah. And then, of course, season three of uh, Strange New Worlds is going to take the Discovery slot next year. So we're going to get it super early, 2025. And I believe they wrapped it up. They're in post-production now. Yeah, then, season three, which yeah. actually begs another really interesting question. We know now Strange New Worlds is only going to get five, right? right. It sounds like that's their mantra. Mm -hmm. So some big things are going to start happening soon, right? Yeah. We're going to get some big characters coming in. Some big events need to be happening sooner or later. Yeah, we're going to get Cybok, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. I hope so. I hope they don't just leave that plot thread dangling. Yeah, yeah I mean, that'd be really lame. I've so. never been excited to see Cybok before and. Mm. I, I are. Are. Uh, so I got a I got a shout out spotted giraffe for this one because she thought the best casting for Cybok is Matt Berry. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yes. 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 I'm into that a hundred percent. I, yeah, Berry, I, I agree with her on that one. That's pretty <laughs> dope. I I think that would be great. It says to Sarah, Father. He <laughs> Oh, uh, that would be amazing. But I, I, I also thought that having Zachary Kinto as Tybok would be very interesting. That would be fun. <laughs> I, I think they don't trust the audience enough to do that. Really? I think the executives go, well, but you confuse people. No. 
And I also think that's a big problem these days with a lot of Hollywood executives. Is they think the audience is stupid, but we're mm -hmm. not. Like you guys are just executives. You're the stupid ones, all right? <laughs> that's all you can do in life. Yeah. We are actually, you know, a bit more learned. Yeah. You know, and we could absolutely deal with that. We would love that. We would embrace that. I think it would be amazing no, if you played it. Yeah, like, oh, we're in another reality. Because the now mm -hmm. the question on the, all over the internet is, is the Strange New World in the Prime or Kelvin universe? Prime. I've, I think I asked that question recently. Yeah. Uh, somebody and uh yeah because i'm starting to doubt where it belongs right because visually I, visually you know, like as frank said recently uh his mantra when he was told how to direct these new star trek is to shoot to thrill because mm. no, they all they all look like they belong part of the kelvin universe in a matter right of they're yeah. not kelvin because what happened to what happened to pike in the kelvin universe he had one voyage on the enterprise and then he got whacked well, he didn't get whacked, but he got yeah, he he's he got admiraled. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's yeah. absolutely not. It's absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the other thing is Pike was a lot older in the Kelvin universe, too. So Yeah, well, yes, yeah. yes. But that would have you could explain that away because of time, you know, it doesn't have to yeah. be right then. But yeah, it's definitely not part of the Kelvin timeline. I just don't know. You guys can't answer me this. I like the films. I think Star Trek Beyond is one of the great Star Trek films. I'll just yes. say it because I really yeah, it's, it. it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think, um, I think Star Trek 09 is one of the best ones. Yeah, yeah and I would say I, Star I mean, Trek 09 is a great movie. The less we talk about Into Darkness, the better. Yeah, but however, do you think what I, I'm curious to wonder what that why they think continuing the Kelvin timeline is super important on film? That's what I don't understand. Why do they think they need to continue? Because I think they wrapped it up in three. Yeah, do you think that, I think so. Do you think that um, they believe that there's a fan base specifically just for that universe? Maybe five years ago. Uh, yeah. <laughs> time has gone. 2016 yeah. that was, was Star Trek Beyond. Wow. It was 20, that long ago? Eight years old. Wow. Yeah. So the people that the fan base that they would have accumulated then would have dissipated. Yeah. You or, know what or, I mean? Or jump to Paramount Plus. Well, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Because so. you remember those Star Trek films are made for everybody. For right. the guy that's gone, let's go to the movies and, oh, yes, there's a new Star Trek movie playing. We'll go and see that. Yeah. Um, more like action. Fans will follow no matter what. I mean, as much as I bitch and moan about what they're doing with Trek, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to fool anybody and say I'm not going to watch it. Of course I'm going to watch it. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know. Uh, yeah, you've got me hook, line, and sinker anyway. But how do you make it for the next generation? You know, what is the next generation going to think of? Because every time you've tried to do it, you don't let it breathe long enough. Right. We don't. Get so they tried to do it with Prodigy. They tried to do it with lower decks, and then they cut their own throat by getting rid of it. Yeah. That's what I think. Star Trek Next uh, 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 Starfleet Academy is absolutely targeted at tween teenage audience, or or Gen X. Is that the Gen X is us. Yeah. Oh, we're Gen X. We're oh. Gen X, dude. Oh, You're talking about Zoomers and um, yeah, Millennial Alpha. Millennial. Gen Alpha now, I think it is. Who? In any way, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, hey, kitty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's frustrating <laughs> because you know what? We are going to be fans. It's not like we're aging out of Star Trek, right? No, I'm going to go into. Well, we're going to be fans to where we've left this mortal coil. You know? Right. So you know, you've got a good 40, 50 years of all of us still loving Star Trek. So why are we being abandoned as an audience? Right. Why is our generation being uh, meh, 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 meh? You know what I mean? And then and the one time they allow it, it becomes the biggest season and the best thing they ever did in New Trek, and that's Picard Season 3. Yeah. 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 It's just yeah. hard. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Prodigy was so great. I doubted Prodigy in the beginning, and I think it was uh, you guys who made yeah. it. Yeah, we loved it. And holy crap, wasn't it amazing? It was because so it was cool. one of those special shows where, although it had the Nickelodeon above, that was targeted for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. It was not yeah, targeted. It, just that kids. was supposed to bring the young kids into the whole lore. Mm. But then they did it so well. It was written so well and, mm. and portrayed excellently to the point where we old cats were like, oh, I like this a lot. I want more of this. But aren't you scared because we know there's probably going to be hanging threads now after Prodigy Season 2? Mm -hmm. What do you mean hanging threads? 
meaning they would have wrote that show thinking they're probably going to get a season three. So oh. not all storylines will be tied up. Well, I think that it, since it's purely Netflix, it's not just a matter of distribution. I think they have the opportunity. Oh, well, it is really distribution. I mean, the, the only thing a Prodigy had to do was in post-production, meaning CGI had to be completed. All the scripts were written. Oh, Everything was in production. And really, Netflix is only – it's really a distrib distribution deal, oh. isn't it? I think they may be paying for the, the tie-up of the rest of the animation. Maybe they're going to invest $10 million. But essentially, it is a Paramount show, and Netflix doesn't really have any influence over the story. Oh, maybe they hire them and, and finish it out. Jeez, I'm standing. I, 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 why am I not wearing a sign that says the end is nigh with a fucking bell in my hand? <laughs> it's nigh. Because I feel like I'm like that. But, yeah, I love I love this franchise very, very much, and I want it I, to be reach, mm -hmm. continue to, to stay in the high levels that I've experienced in the past. I'm hoping that we get some a third season. I hope it continues for a bit. I mean, if the people that oh, that'd be interesting, if the people that fought to get it on Netflix uh, band together to continue and watch it and get engaged, I, I would don't see Netflix not putting money up for a third season. However, there was some news today. Our good friend David Jones actually sent me a link today that apparently Sony are making a bid to buy Paramount. Oh, no way. Now, if you have a corporate takeover, that changes the game creatively. Yeah, it does. New people in, they may go, what the hell are you? Kurtzman, get the hell out of here. Yeah, that could change. Jerry, everything. come back. Let's fix yeah. this. Let's make it, you know. Oh, we could get Spider-Man on the USS Enterprise. <laughs> what do you got the weirdest thing The most done. absurd crossovers. <laughs> the both of you were like, nah, 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 nah. Hey, no reboot Star you, Trek with an all female cast. Did oh. you hear that Tarantino has walked away from his tenth film? He was almost ready to start filming The Critic, a year and a half in development, and he's just announced, "Nah, I'm not doing it now. I'm doing uh -oh. something else." Is it Star Trek Four? Please, <laughs> <laughs> please, like you know, Would, you, are you game? Are you gung ho for Star Trek Tarantino? I would, I would love be. to see it because I want to see it. His dialogue is just incredible. The way he treats characters is incredible. And th that episode of Black Mirror, USS Callister, yeah. highlighted for me the potential to go dark in the Star Trek um. and make an R rated film. Hell, if the mouse is down with making R rated films, why can't Trek do it? You know, it's true. Yeah. That's very true. That would be amazing. Mm. My goodness. You could be. So I don't think pool. this is done and done. I think there's, there's going to be a lot of flux happening in the world. Of yeah. Because I heard there was somebody else wanted to. Oh, Warner Brothers, I think, wanted to buy Paramount. Skydance. Skydance. There you go. Yeah. That's, the, that's yeah. the one I balked at because it's JJ and Alex Gertzman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's hope, <laughs> let's hope Sony comes in with the big bucks. Get some oh, I know I'm being mean to Alex Kurtzman and he deserves every bit of it. <laughs> However, I just think we need a new, fresh, creative direction. He's now held on to this franchise to close to a decade. Wow. Oh. He's well, look, at German. German. look at Rick. Yeah. Look at Rick, you know, and all that crew. By the time he got the Enterprise, he's burnt out. He's creatively yeah. done. Yeah. He needed to bring in <laughs> Yeah, and he would admit that Rick Berman said that in interviews. He like I was, mm -hmm. I was kind of just done. I was toast. I'm real tired, Ma. Real <laughs> tired. Sunset and big guy, you know. Yeah, sunset. <laughs> That's a bingo. And that was a space bar hit. Sorry, <laughs> it wouldn't be a Captain's Quadrant episode unless there was a Tepsil <laughs> screw up. Yeah, yeah. Imagine how it's going to be live. Be sure to get your tickets to Trek Long Island because <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. All the buttons that we're going to be pushing. Um, I think that's going to wrap it up unless you gentlemen want to mention anything else regarding the Star Trek universe. Mm. No? Just give us more now. 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 More. now Make our choices. choices. Legacy. Yeah, give us legacy. Yeah, legacy. legacy. Save right. more I wonder if they will sign deals. I reckon they sign, you know, pre-app deals like holding deals. Oh, you know what I mean. It's just in case they hadn't made their mind up whether they were going to do it or not. Yeah. Uh, all the, there's a there's, a, there's also a theory being floated around that Jerry Ryan and Michelle Hurd are being punished for their involvement in the strike. I heard that theory too. Oh, you know, David told me that. Our good buddy David Jones. Yeah. Told me That's, that story probably accurate you know and and that's that's even sadder that we are yep. in this bond day and age would be that petty 
Oh, people be petty. People, people. Are super petty. Yeah. I'm petty. Now, no offense to Michelle Hurt, right? And I like her, but really, if you're going to get rid of seven of nine out of that, like, you want to be careful. The fans get a hold of that, that she's been black, bold, because yeah. she's a. She's a decades-long character. And no offense right. to Michelle, mm -hmm. who I thought was fantastic in season three. She's not. Right. But, but she's know. but she's well beloved in the Trek verse. Yes. Yeah. Not as much as seven and nine, mind you. But yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. The line like when I was meeting both the lines for seven and nine was ridiculous. It was just like of course it is. Too long. Yeah, of course it is. It was uh I think the longest line was seven, then LeVar Burton, and then Jonathan Frakes. Like yeah. Frakes and Burton, eh? Yeah. yeah. For uh, okay. hey, um, yeah, yeah, kid. All right, keep going. <laughs> there's just such hey, a can I recommend. Um, there's a great podcast out there by Michael Rosenbaum called Inside of You, and he's had Brett Spiner on there recent times, and he's had Jonathan Frakes. The Jonathan Frakes interview is amazingly informative and wonderfully done, and he's such an auteur, you know, yeah. uh, Frakes. So recommend Michael Rosenbaum inside of you. Go check it out after you've watched this and liked and subscribed and shared. Oh else. yeah. Like and subscribe. And if you're listening to us on Spotify, I know this is the end of the episode, but please give us a rating. Uh, we'd really appreciate five stars. A good rating. Yeah. <laughs> five stars, please. Clarify that joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you yeah. know, all the people that hate us have already stopped watching. It's just the ones who really like us are still listening to this garbage. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. So five stars. Five stars. There's, there's 45 of you that I know for sure that are coming in every week to listen to the Captain Squadron on audio podcast. So if we can get 12 of you to just give us a five star, we'd greatly appreciate it. Yep. All yep. right. And that is going to wrap it up this week. Be sure to join us next week. There's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so I will be here next week as well. And uh, we don't have to do any space. Well, temporal problem's not going away for a little while. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be good. I'm sure we'll it's going to raise its head again, your temporal problem. Yeah, my temporal problem will come back, but not this week. So until next time, live long and prosper, peace and long life. And we will see you next time. Affirmative. Oh, what a great show live. Wow. Yeah. So many comments this week. So many people at that show. It's amazing. <laughs>